Let's talk about games, shall we? So, before we get into the actual review on the PlayStation Classic, let's go into the PlayStation background. You know, the very first PlayStation we knew and loved. Sony released the PlayStation in Japan on the 3rd of December, 1994. North America got it on the 9th of September in 1995. The Japanese seem to have loved the console, being that they sold over 2 million units after 6 months in the market. Let's talk about some of the basics of the specifications of the original PlayStation that came out, you know, in 1995. So, the CPU was a 32-bit CPU. It had uh, 2 megabytes of RAM main, 1 megabyte for video. And the sound, of course, was 16-bit 24 channel. So with that being said, it's pretty easy to say that the PlayStation actually got a pretty good reputation. For Sony's first attempt at a console, I think they hit it out of the park. They did very well. The original PlayStation has a lot of nostalgia for me. There's a lot of beautiful games, such as Castlevania, Symphony of the Night, Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9. See where I'm going there? Tomb Raider 2, Silent Hill, Final Fantasy Tactics, Legacy of Cain, Soul Reaver... Chrono Cross, Resident Evil. Okay, you get the picture. There were a whole lot of great games coming out for this console at the time. So let's fast forward to 2018. We finally get the PlayStation Classic. We've seen stuff like, you know, the NES Classic and the SNES Classic. And if you guys have been paying attention, you'll notice we already did an unboxing video of the PlayStation Classic. So at this very moment, while this video is being made, the PlayStation Classic is currently $100 to purchase. So the real question is this, is the PlayStation Classic worth your hard-earned cash? Is the nostalgia level of this retro console worth $100 of your hard-earned money? Well I'm here to give you my opinion and possibly help you make your mind up on that. Before I go any further, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. Nintendo raised the bar when it came to the classic retro game consoles. I mean, we had our complaints, but at the same time, there was so much nostalgia with what they gave us. And this is what it's about, honestly. It's about nostalgia. So that being said, I can't look at the PlayStation Classic and compare it to the SNES Classic and the NES Classic and say it's as good or better. The console itself is actually pretty nice. The buttons work well. Everything works the way it should. There's a button for changing discs instead of having to do anything. Nothing opens. It's kind of that's kind of a disappointment. This might be just a me thing, but the controllers feel kind of smaller than they used to be. Maybe because I'm a little older and bigger now. I don't know. They also feel a little cheaply constructed compared to what I remember the original PlayStation controllers to be. One of my biggest complaints about this is after opening the box, looked into it and found a USB plug-in that actually plugs in for the power. I actually thought I got ripped off because I was looking for the AC adapter that goes into the USB cord. You know, the thing you plug into the wall to give it power. So after frustration, I looked into the user manual, which is the only thing that came with the actual PlayStation Classic. No posters, no nothing, just a user manual. So I open it up and I look inside and I realize in the manual it says it doesn't come with an AC adapter. You plug it into the wall to a USB port. Sony, for $100, you could give us an AC adapter with this freaking product. And unfortunately, those actions make this product seem exactly like what it is. A cash grab. They could have charged us $60 to $80 for the PlayStation Classic. But no, they went full on greed and asked for $100 per unit. Just giving us a bare basics user manual and no AC adapter. So if you don't have your own USB style plug AC adapter, good luck. You're going to have to go buy one. So with that said, let's briefly touch base on the 20 games that the system came with. Battle Arena Toshinden was out in 1995 and is a weapons-based fighting game developed by Tamsoft. Now being that I'm not too big into fighting games, I can't tell you whether this game is good or not. However, I have friends that have played it and loved it. Cool Borders 2. I have to admit, Cool Borders 2 wasn't the game I expected them to pick for the PlayStation Classic lineup, but here we are. The game was brought to us in 1997 and was developed by EUP Systems for the PlayStation. 
And I have to admit, the game has some pretty cool little extras, like you can edit your own snowboard. And it definitely brought out the juvenile in me. Destruction Derby. To be honest, Destruction Derby is one of those games I've never really played. And once again, it's one of those games that I'm surprised made it onto the PlayStation Classic list. Destruction Derby was out in 1995 and was brought to us by Sony Interactive Entertainment. It's more or less your standard vehicular combat racing game. Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII was the jewel of Squaresoft's PlayStation lineup. And though the graphics haven't aged well, especially with today's standards, the game's storytelling is still superb. And yes, this is one of those games you have to utilize that button for changing discs. Final Fantasy VII came out in 1997 by Squaresoft, now known as Square Enix, for the PlayStation console. And let me tell you, this game will hit you square in the field. Most video games that we love have their humble beginnings, and this one had its humble beginnings in the PlayStation 1 era, Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto was a 1997 game, and it was also published by, you guessed it, Rockstar Games. I will say that this game is definitely a far cry from the Grand Theft Autos and Red Dead Redemptions we know today, but it's always very lovely to see those humble beginnings. Intelligence Cube. Intelligence Cube came out in 1997 with Sony Interactive Entertainment. If you like puzzle games, this is probably for you. However, it's not really my cup of tea. I honestly believe this was just one of those games built to show off the new graphics back in the day. Jumping Flash. Jumping Flash was brought to us by Sony Interactive Entertainment in 1995. I'm starting to see a pattern here. This game is like one of Alice in Wonderland's residences on a bad drug trip. Here, I'll show you. shadow threatening the safety of peaceful worlds, an evil scientist who frightens children and is bent on slavery. A giant robot has seized a peaceful world and carried it off. Aloha's evil plan is to turn it into a huge private retreat for himself. Universal City Hall, here to help the people. Robert can do the job. Let's go, Robert. Jump and go. Once again, probably not one of the best games to choose for the PlayStation Classic Library. But, here we are. Metal Gear Solid. I didn't really get a chance to pick up Metal Gear Solid when I was younger when it first came out for the PlayStation, so I'm very eager to dig into it now. Metal Gear Solid was brought to us by Konami in the year of 1998. This is definitely one of those games that I'm going to play and enjoy. I've been wanting to play it for a long time, I've heard a lot of things about it, so I'm eager to get to it. Mr. Driller, brought to us by Bandai Namco Entertainment in the year 2000. The idea behind this game is basically you're an adorable man with a drill going as far down as you can while keeping your air supply good and not dying? That's pretty much it. Don't die. It's more or less a puzzle game and if you're into that kind of stuff I know you'll like it. I tend to enjoy it from time to time. It can be challenging and also kind of silly. Oddworld Abe's Odyssey. This is another one of those games that I've heard good things about but I've never had the opportunity to play. It was published by Oddworld Inhabitants Inc and out in 1997. Rayman. Rayman was by Ubisoft and it was brought to us in 1995. It was another one of those really strange games for its time. You'll see what I mean. Hi folks! You wanna know what's going on? Let me tell you the story of Rayman! I don't know what really throws me off in this. Maybe it's how the characters look. Maybe the animation's just too damn bright. I can't really tell you, but all I can tell you is it just didn't sit right with me. I didn't feel good about this game. Sorry, folks. This apparently can't last. Resident Evil. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, guys. I had something in my throat. Resident Evil. Resident Evil was brought to us by Capcom in the year of 1997. Another one of those games that would spawn into a huge franchise that we know and love today. So, Revelations Persona, or Persona Revelations, you be the judge. Anyway, Revelations Persona was by Atlas and was out in 1996. Another game that would branch out into a rather well-known series. Ridge Racer Type 4, brought to you by Bandai Namco in the year of 1999. Now, there's not much I can say about this game, being that I haven't played it much, but I will say that the opening is immaculate and very confusing. Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo 
was brought to us by Capcom in the year of 1996. They really could have replaced this game with something better. This game did not need to be in the lineup for the PlayStation Classic. Unfortunately, they just threw it in there. I think it was just a, here, here you go. Siphon Filter. Siphon Filter was brought to us by Sony Interactive Entertainment in the year of 1999. This is another one of those games I really don't know about, so I guess I'll have to get to know it. Tekken 3. Oh god, not another fighting game. But wait, it's a good fighting game. Tekken 3 was brought to us by Bandai Namco in 1998, and has since been a popular franchise to this day. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. Brought to us by Ubisoft and was published in the year 2000. Now, I have to admit, I've only played this on the PC, but I remember it being a really cool game, so I can only imagine for the PlayStation Classic it'd be great as well. Twisted Metal, by Sony Interactive Entertainment and out in 1995. Oh man, I heard so much about this game when it came out. No one would stop talking about it, everyone wanted to play it. And now we can on the PlayStation Classic. Wild Arms, by Sony Interactive Entertainment and out in 1997. Now putting this on the list for the PlayStation Classic was a wise choice. This game has so much nostalgia and like I said earlier, the nostalgia is the name of the game. I absolutely remember this game when I was in high school and I can tell you that I loved everything from the beginning theme to the characters. Everything about this game was amazing. The beginning theme, we'll go back to that for a second, the beginning theme of this game was, was a joy to listen to. So after discussing the console and all the games that came with it, do I think it's worth buying? Was it worth $100? To put it bluntly, no. Because they gave us a lot of throwaway games, and the fact that the PlayStation Classic doesn't come with many things physical, a USB-AC adapter being one of them, I don't think that the PlayStation Classic is worth $100. I would have gladly paid $60 to $80 for this thing, rather than $100. It just feels like what I said it was earlier, a cash grab, unfortunately. Now, if they would have put more games like Chrono Cross, Castlevania, Symphony of the Night, Legend of Dragoon. Anyway, if they would have put more games like that in there, this probably would have been worth $100. Unfortunately, I think a lot of us feel like we've been swindled. And because of that, my rating for the PlayStation Classic is a 5 out of 10. It's just not good enough. They could have done so much better. They got us all hyped up and just gave us a half mediocre kind of thing. This is the only classic system I've ever bought that I've had buyer's remorse over. I'm just hoping to save you from the same issue. Anyway, nerds, thank you for tuning in. We'll definitely see you on the next episode of Let's Talk About Games.